Good day once more, my amiable viewers. You are welcome back to class. In our today's discussion, we are going to have a look at some electrolysis. And that's uh, carrying out electrolysis in some solutions. Remember, in our first class, we talked about um, electrode, we talked about anode, we talked about cathode, we talked about some other things. So today we are going to go into some examples of electrolysis. The one we are going to start with is electrolysis of acidified water. By acidified water, we mean electrolysis of dilute tetrahydrosulfosis acid. So this electrolysis of acidified water, remember, the apparatus or the instrument which you can use to carry out the electrolysis of acidified water is known as Hofmann voltammeter. Note this, it's not voltmeter. I used to measure volt, this one is Hofmann voltammeter. Check out the diagrams. Now, the major thing we are going to talk about in this topic is how it's carried out uh, and the basic thing you need to know. Now, if you are carrying out electrolysis of acidified water, Remember, we said uh, acidified water means dilute H2SO4. In this electrolysis, you have the H2SO4 acting as the electrolyte. Remember, since it's an electrolyte, it will undergo dissociation or ionization. It will ionize in solution to give 2H plus plus SO4 2 minus. This is the electrolysis of acid. Remember, it's in aqueous solution. This is how it ionizes in solution based on the ionic theory. Now, since it is in aqueous solution, the water also will undergo ionization. So you have H2O. This is a liquid that you ionize to give you H plus OH minus. So these are the that, these are the two solutions that will undergo ionization. The H2SO4 that is actually the electrolyte and the water in which the H2SO4 is dissolved will also, also undergo ionization. Now after undergo ionization, there will not be competition. Remember, there are three factors of electrolysis or the three factors that govern the way these ions are being discharged or carried to the anode or the cathode. Remember, the three factors are, first of all, you have position of the ions, In the electrochemical series or activity series, they are the same thing. The second one is the nature of the electrode. Then the third one is the concentration of the ions in the electrolyte. These are the three factors you always put in your mind. Remember we also said again that you have two poles, the cathode and the anode. Let's say you have the cathode. And you, let me write it down. You have the cathode and you have the anode. Now, the cathode is usually the negative electrode. So you put negative here, while the anode is a positive electrode. Positive electrode. You can see these two are positive charges. They are positive ions, and these are these have negative charges. So these ones, they are, both of them are hydrogen ions. So there is no competition there. But one thing you need to know is this: because the cathode carries negative charge, it means it has high concentration of ions in them, negative ions. So these these ions, this we have so so much electrons in it. So this hydrogen ion, which is deficient of electrons we migrate to the cathode so that to get uh, a refill, you go to the cathode and take up electron. So you have H plus plus electron, which it takes from the cathode because the cathode is rich in electrons to give you H. This is atomic hydrogen. Hydrogen does not exist in this form. Instead, it will not combine in pair because this reaction is taking place million times inside the solution. Both two atoms will join together to form a molecule. So this one will combine with another neutral atom. This one is neutral. You have H plus H to give you H2. So once it's H2, it's now a gas. This is how it exists. It's a diatomic molecule containing two atoms to form a molecule. Since it has formed a gas, it now bubbles up. It goes up and is collected at the 
cathode, it doesn't have competition because both of them are hydrogen ions. Then at the anode, remember we said the anode is positively charged. Let me clean this. Remember we said the anode is positively charged, meaning that it is deficient of electrons. It does, it's not reaching electrons at all, so it needs to refill. Therefore, these negative, um, these ions, these radicals, which have excess electrons, will now migrate to the anode, so as to give out the excess electrons to it, in order to become a neutral species, so, it, so that it too can be discharged. But the problem is this, you can see SO42- minus is highly electropositive. All those that are highly electropositive, like SO42-, minus, NO3-, minus, and uh, those are highly electropositive on top of the series, they are never discharged, instead they prefer to remain an, as ion. Because OH is lower in the electrochemical series, it can easily be given off. Therefore, OH being lower in the electrochemical series migrates to the anode. You have OH minus to give out the excess electron plus E minus. You see, it has given out the excess electron. So you now have OH as a neutral species. OH, where these reactions I said before happens in millions inside the same solution. Therefore, this one will combine with another OH to give you H2O plus oxygen. You see it. So that the question will be balanced. This is water, it returns to solution. Then this other one, which is oxygen, atomic oxygen, doesn't exist like that also. You combine with another oxygen to form O2, which is a molecule of oxygen. And it will be given off as a gas. The same way hydrogen is given off as a gas. But what you need to know is this. In this water method that where the experiment is carried out, we see hydrogen is given off at the cathode, while oxygen is given off at the anode. And we know that hydrogen plus oxygen, 2H2 plus O2 to give you 2H2O. It means therefore water molecule is being released from this solution. Therefore, what happens to the solution is this. The solution, the, the amount of acid in it still remains the same thing on its own entirely. But the water molecule is continuously being removed. Therefore, the concentration will not be very, very high because it's leaving only the acid. Remember water is used for dilution. The amount of the acid remaining still remains. Don't forget that still remains the same. The concentration of the acid remains the same. However, because water, which was initially used to dilute, is now being removed, the solution becomes more concentrated, even though the concentration still remains, because water is being removed from the acid solution. So this is how electrolysis of, of um, dilute H2SO4 is being carried out. And what, how does it? How do you actually convert it to acidified water? Just bring a few drops of H2SO4, add it to water become dilute H2SO4, and that's how it's carried out. Remember, the instrument you can use to measure this is not just an ordinary instrument, it's known as Hofmann potameter, which we have already said. And again, another thing you need to know is this, um, this kind of solution, if you use blue lit paper to touch it, it becomes red, because from our knowledge of acid bases and salt, acid turns blue lit paper to red. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Watch out for the next video. Please kindly help me out by sharing it. Thank you.